what's good boss chicks welcome back to another video i know that i've been gone for far too long at least it feels like eternity for me however i am back with a video um i hope everyone is doing well um if you have children in school i hope online uh, learning is going well let's have a conversation drop your comments in the comment section below let me know how it's going for everybody and i'm back with something that i think that will definitely benefit you guys this is a product consistency sheet that i actually got from uh, natalie carmona um get nail 32 is her social links on instagram as well as on youtube as well and i'm trying to hold this so that my um ring light don't really reflect on it so Let's get down to business, guys. Okay, let's talk. So, um, I think most people get caught up in, um, like, doing nails. They want to start with all the designer, beautiful designs and hop right in. But let me just tell you, if you do not have the right product consistency and you don't understand this part, you have to understand this part of it, being able to pick up the right size bead for the area of the nail that you're going to be working on and the uh, consistency of the bead, meaning it's not too runny or it's not too dry so that you will be able to work with it. You'll be able to mold it and um, come out with a great looking nail as well as not flood the cuticle if the bead is too wet or it, it be too dry and then you still can't work with that bead and getting the correct cuticle placement um, so that you can prevent lifting and so on and so forth it all starts with your product consistency i will leave this information in the description box below um so that you guys can download this as well she has it like on her google drive and every now and again I, you, i'll do my nails and things like that but i still come back to the basis uh, the basics which is this product consistency sheet I'll get this out. There was one for Tammy Taylor, but it's not available anymore. So Natalie has done us all the favor of being able to still be able to access this. And she created it her own, her own with the inspiration of Tammy Taylor. So going back though, so we're going to practice picking up beats. Like I say, you sometimes, um, there's so much that goes on into designing nails it's not just pick up a bead and work with it and put it there there's a lot more that goes into actually building a structure of a nail and um sometimes like i stop i always come back to this because i feel like sometimes i lose my basis with the different designs um and i've only been doing nails consistently like for a year so i'm still a beginner myself so when i do have the time i'll go back to the basis and i'll start here so we're gonna work with this if you guys want to work along if you want to go ahead and hit that description box and go ahead and print you out a copy i bought these little sheet protectors from i think i picked mine up at walmart but you can pick some up at your dollar general um so let's do that. So if you need to pause this video and come back and let's practice some beads, um, let's get right into it. So there is instructions at the top of the sheet that tells you how to apply your acrylic. So when applying acrylic, it is very important that you first practice your liquid to powder ratio to help with the consistency of your beads. By following these steps, you will be able to pick up a perfect large, medium, or small bead each time. First, Dip the entire body of the brush into your monomer. Wipe the brush in the dampened dish away from you. For a large bead, only wipe the tip of the brush. For a medium bead, wipe halfway. And for a small bead, wipe most of the brush off. Once you have dipped your brush and have wiped it off based on the side bead that you need, drag your brush away from you in the polymer. Next, place the uh, product on the nail, lift, and let the product flow for three to five seconds. Then, gently pat the product on the nail and stroke. So, there's a demonstration over here on how to dip, wipe, and drag your brush. Also, she put on here um, the actual parts of the brush so you have your uh your handle your fertile your 
belly of the brush and the tip. So let me kind of go through that. So this is my JC Beauty Concepts number 12. So of course, this would be your handle of your brush, right? This is your handle where these grips are on this JC Beauty Concept. This is your fertile, okay? This is your belly of your brush, this, this part here. And then this is the just the very tip of the brush. So that's kind of what she's explaining right there. So I'm going to be using this brush today to demonstrate picking up the large, medium, and small beads. So I have my dampen dish right here, and it has uh, my monomer already in it. I got this from Amazon. I can link this in the product uh, in the description box below. This is my actual brush cleaner that is a mix of monomer and um, acetone. And then I have like my clear powder in that one. And then I have my regular monomer that's ready to go in this one. And I like keeping it in this. There are some brush holders here, but I don't put, you know, my brushes in there because you need to hang your brushes upside down on your desk. Also, you guys need to be sure that you get some really good quality paper towels that you can dry your brush off on. Um, these are the shop towels. Um, I showed you guys that in my Walmart uh, haul. In my video, I um, I picked these up because I couldn't find the Viva Signature. If you can find the Viva Signature, that would be great. But these do a very excellent job at absorbing the leftover monomer and the um, polymer, which is your powder from your uh, brush so that you can get a clean brush every time. Um, you don't want acrylic getting stuck in your brush. Let's talk about brush quality before we hop into this. So this is a 100% Kaliski hair brush. Like I said, this is from the company JC Beauty Concepts in a number 12. Um, a lot of people recommend that you start off like with a number eight or number six, I'm going to tell you to start off with what's comfortable for you. A lot of the product consistency and working with your products is based off your comfortability and being able to feel your brush. You have to be able to feel the weight of the liquid in the brush to get that perfect bead. It all takes practice and it takes time. Don't just think, you know, you're like going to get it right away. Um, even some very seasoned nail tech still make mistakes you know it's just being able to um if you do make the mistake learning how to correct it and so on and so forth so in my dampen dish i have i don't think that's jc beauty concepts um i think it is i'm gonna grab my um so what you want to do when you're working you want to be sure that you are working with the same companies uh monomer and polymer because that's going to help you with picking up the perfect bead. So I have the JC Beauty Concepts Cover Blush. And I also have the JC Beauty Concept Monitor. Try and make them match because um, if you're using a different um, polymer and a different monomer from two different companies, they're not going to act the same. So you're not going to really like get what the product is actually supposed to do. For example, if you are using like uh, Young Nails, you want to be sure that you have Young Nails monomer and polymer. Be sure that they match because they work together. They work together. So what I'm going to do, I'm not sure which one I have in here, but like I don't want to waste that. So what I'm going to do here, Let me try and keep most of this in shot so you guys can see. I don't want to really cover up the sheet because I want you to be able to see that as well. So, so I'm going to put my paper towels off to the side there. And so let's make sure you guys can see this. So I'm going to do this first on here on the paper towel so you guys can see. So when you first um, do your brush and you're using it for the first time today, forever whenever you get your brush and you're going to be using it you're going to go ahead and dip your brush all the way into the monomer okay and i kind of like to spread out the hairs in my brush to be sure that i release all the air bubbles that are possibly trapped in the brush so this is what you call burping your brush you're going to um, put that all the way down in there now remember going back to the practice sheet i'm going to move this over a little bit 
going back to the practice sheet that's on here. So if you got it and you're following along, then you know that when you come up here to where it says, um, for a small B, wipe most of the brush off. Now, you're going to find different people that pick up their beads different. Some people... Some people like to take their their um, brush and they like to drag. So some people will drag across like for a large bead. And then some people drag like halfway. And then some people drag another halfway mark from there for large, medium, and small bead. I particularly don't like doing it that way in case my... Because I'm not really paying attention to how far I'm dragging or anything like that. I don't like to do it like that. Um, what works for me is dipping the brush in this is for a small bead dip your brush all the way into your monomer wipe off not very hard but as you can see i just kind of wiped it off on the side and there's still liquid in my brush so when i dip my brush in and i wipe because i'm wiping away from me i wipe lightly not not super light but not super hard either you're going to learn the difference the more that you do it so that's the side i wiped off the monomer on this side of the brush this side of the brush is still wet so what I like to do is then turn it over and I balance my finger on the container and then I tap once in my powder and I can get a small bead of acrylic you'll know that you picked up the right consistency if the bead leaves the brush without getting stuck and it easily glides off that's my small bead let me zoom you guys in so you can see a little bit more of what I'm saying here so that's a small bead and this is it's going to be different for each size brush that you use I'm using a number 12 so keep that in mind so I'm going to make sure that my brush is clean so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off make sure it's all clean and ready to go for my next one okay and make sure that there's no acrylic. You're going to be, I mean, no acrylic stuck in the brush. You're going to be wiping your brush off a lot. You need to know that you need to wipe your brush off a lot. You don't want acrylic stuck in your brush because then it's going to mess up the consistency of your bead as well. So now I'm going to go in for a medium bead. So now dip my brush. And let me, I'm going to take this out of here so you guys can see this. I'm going to dip my brush. And then I'm going to wipe halfway and stop right there. Halfway for my medium bead. Yeah. So there's still liquid in the brush. I did not wipe it all off. And then I'm going to go into my polymer. And I'm going to tap two times. One, two. And that's going to give me a medium bead. This is just how I like to do it because it works for me. And as you can see, it's pearly. It's ready to go. I'm going to put that one right next to that one so you guys can see it. Yeah. And the brush is clean. There's no acrylic or anything stuck on the brush. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe that off. Make sure it's good and ready to go for my next one. I'm going to grab this again. I'm going to go in. So my monomer, as you can see, see there was there was bubbles in there if you were able to catch that. Go into my monomer. And then for a large bead, you see this like dark spot on the brush. I'm just gonna wipe the tip of the brush off. Yeah. And I'm gonna go into my polymer, balance my pinky on the side of the container. And then you can level out your um, your powder as well. And as you can see, I keep rotating to the wet side. So if I put that in slow motion, it's more of a... Yeah? And then I'm going to tap three times. One, two, three. And as I tap, I'm walking into that. I'm waiting until that pearl becomes a pearl. Yeah? And then I'm going to go ahead and place that down. And that's my large bead. Okay. So this is the small bead. This one is the medium bead. 
and that's my large bead. Now, if I wanted an extra large bead, I would do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off real good, make sure there's nothing in there. And I'll, sometimes I'll, if I think there's something in there, I'll go in and I'll kind of wipe it off. And then I'll just go ahead and wipe it off some more. The monomer is a conditioner for your brush, uh, for a Kalinsky hair brush. So keep that in mind. So let's say I needed a bead smaller than that. Some people work in the one bead method. Uh, some people work in the two ball so or three. So it's just up to you and your preference and what you're comfortable with. And I don't know if you guys seen those bubbles again. So I'm going to go in there and I want an extra large bead this time. So I'm just like barely tapping it on the side. So let me do that again. So I'm going to put that in the monomer and I'm just going to barely tap it on its side to drain a little bit of liquid. So with an extra large bead, as you probably could have guessed that, I'm going to level out the powder, balance my finger on the side of the container, and then I'm going to go in one, two, three, and four. Flip that um, over and allow the product to flow to that bead. And as you can see, it kind of had like the little bumps on it. It kind of remind me of a little orange or something. And now that it's pearly, it is ready to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and place that down right next to that one. And see, it would be ready to go. If this is helping you so far, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up and let me know down in the comment section below if this is, uh, information is helping you out in any shape, fashion, or form. And if you like these videos, let me know that as well. If you're not following me, go ahead. Be sure to follow my social accounts. They will be in the upper left-hand corner of this video. And let's get right into it. So, this sheet is a little bit different. I'm going to leave you guys zoomed in so you can see. Let's get on the corner here of the sheet. And hopefully, I'm going to do it like in the middle on this one so you guys can see and then I still have my, let me put my thing right there. And we're actually are basically following these instructions that are right here. So where it says dip your brush into the monomer, wipe brush away from you, which is what I just showed you, and then drag the brush towards you across the polymer. However, I do not drag, I tap. So so this is what I do. So if I want a small bead, I tap one time. If I want a medium bead, I tap two times. And I kind of walk it just a little bit across the powder. So just like this, that's how I do it. If I want a large bead, then I go one, two, three in the powder. An extra large bead, it's four. I'll go one, two, three, four, and then always flip that brush right on up so that the um, monomer flows into the polymer or liquid to powder. The liquid flows right to the powder and a lot weight. Sometimes, sometimes depending on the product that you're using and what company that you're using it for, you must wait. That's where you get the, after you pick up your bead, and you place it down on the nail, you are allowing the product to flow for um, three to five seconds. And three to five seconds depends on the company that you're using. So there's some slow um, setting powders and liquids. There's some medium and there's um, fast. Like if you are Young Nails, Young Nails has like a core, um, a speed and like an ultimate or something like that. But it depends on, you know, how fast they have it. Okay. So after you um, let the product flow for three to five seconds, you're going to go ahead and pat the product on the free edge, which will be like this. This would be the free edge. So you would pat, 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 pat. Once you get that into place, you want to go ahead and clean your brush and then you're going to stroke it out. Okay. And the less, um, monomer that you have in your brush and you keep touching that product, the faster that product is going to um, dry. And that will be the last step that's right there. So let's go ahead. Let's do one. And then we're going to go from there. Now it's been a minute. Let me see. Let me see. I can get this right. All right. 
So I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush into my monomer. See those bubbles? Because I've been playing with the brush. I like to do that every time, though, just to ensure that I get all the hairs wet. And then we're going to go in. It says for a small bead. So we're going to wipe our brush all the way off. Yeah. Tap one time into the powder. And that's going to be our small bead. I don't know if it needs to be that small, but we're going to find out. And I'm going to allow that to um, turn into a pearl. And then we're going to, my small bead on my number 12 brush is a little bit bigger than that. See, that just came right on off. And then I'm going to go ahead and wipe my brush off. And then we're going to pat. That's the next step, pat. And pat that into place just like that okay and then now we're gonna go in for a medium B so and then this will if you keep patting this right here it'll dry out like I mean it'll start to um, form okay so we'll go ahead and wipe that off so let's go ahead in for a medium B so stick the um, brush all the way in and then we're gonna wipe half of the brush, yeah? And then come over to my powder, get a, a sturdy hand and go one, two, two times for a medium bead. And then we're gonna allow this bead to set and pearlize itself. And then we're gonna place the product down clean release and then you go ahead and wipe your brush and then you can pat mine's a little bit big outside this circle but you pretty much want it to be within these circles that'll give you good beads and give you good consistency to be honest I really like working with the JC Beauty concepts it's great so pat 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 And then if this was actually on the nail, we would stroke that. So I'll do one on the nail in a little while. So pretty much like that. Doing this is great. B consistency will build a good nail. It is always good to go back to those foundations. So I'm going to wipe my brush off. And notice that on my brush, I have a, a pinched brush. So you'll see like the indentations right there. So with that being a pinch brush, what I like to do is make sure I don't I don't wipe on the side where the pinch is because it'll um, take the brush out of shape. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe in the direction of where it's pinched to keep it snatched. Keep your brush snatched. You take care of your brush. It will last a really long time. And a good brush will last years. So you shouldn't have to keep buying brushes. If your brushes are falling apart, one, verify that they are 100% Kalinsky hair brushes. And then next, verify as well um, that you you don't have acrylic stuck in your brush. All right, so let's go in for this large bead. So I'm going to go put my brush all the way in. And then remember for a large bead, we are just going to, from this little dark part, just the tip of the brush. So let's do that again. In to the monomer and wipe just the tip of the brush. Yeah? Not a whole lot of pressure. It doesn't take all that. I'm going to balance my, my pinky for stability. And for a large bead, I'm going in three times. So one, two, three. And it doesn't have to be this slow. I'm just doing it this slow so you guys can, can see it in action. So... We're going to wait on that to go ahead and um, turn into a pearl. Go ahead and flip that over and sit that down. It should be a nice clean release. Just like that. I'm going to wipe off my brush. And then we're going to one, two, three, four, five. Let the product flow for three to five seconds. Yeah? According to the instructions. And then... 
after you pat, pat, pat it in place, you would then stroke the nail into place. Yeah. All right, let me know. Yeah, and then I'm going to wipe off my brush, take a little bit more liquid out. I actually did well on the um, large bead because I actually wanted to show you guys just how to do this. So if I had to did the same thing to the medium bead, it probably would have turned out the same. Either way it goes. All right, let's go ahead and let's do one practice nail. And I'll show you guys that as well. I'm trying to make sure this light is really good. Because my light is shining on that. Anywho. All right, I'm going to put this over here so I can wipe off. I'm going to kind of cross over to wipe, but I got my gap and dish right here. So we're going to start um, with... I don't know, she has a number one, two, and three, and then four. So we're going to start with number one, which in this little area, if you look at this area, it only looks like that's going to be a small bead. So we're going to have a small bead all the way into the monomer. Go ahead and wipe off the entire brush. Not very hard or anything like that. So find the right pressure and feel the weight of your brush. And we only need to go in one time for a small bead, yeah? So we're gonna wait on that to pearl. So it, now that it's turned into a pearl, now go ahead and place that down in section number one. All right, wipe off your brush. Two, three, four, five, and then we're going to pat, pat. Now that we got that in place, we're gonna go ahead and stroke that out. Do a little piece of hair in there. Yeah. Okay. Now, number two, we're going to work number two. I'm going to go in for a small B again, all the way. Maybe if I put this right here, all the way into the monomer. I'm going to go in for a small B, wipe all the way off. Let's move this over here too so you guys can see. And I don't know. I don't remember if I turned my brush or not. All the way into the monomer. Wipe the brush off all the way. And tap once into the powder. We're going to wait on that pearl. And then we're going to go ahead and place the product right there. Wipe off the brush. Two. Three. Four, If it's the product is still too wet, be sure to dry off your brush. So wipe off your brush and then work with the tip of your brush. Number three is a small bead. That is your cuticle bead.
So I'm not really worried about like that blend right there. Oops. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead. So now that I wiped off my brush, I'm not, we're going to do the cuticle area. So I'm going to go all the way into the monitor, just like that. And then I'm going to wipe off the entire brush. Because now we're going to work with that cuticle bead, which by far is the hardest bead. But you're going to keep your brush behind the bead. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. So we're going to go in. We're going to tap once. I don't like that bead. Let's start over. So I'm going to go into my monitor. I should have left this sitting right here. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Go into my mama, monomer. I said monomer. <laughs> go into my monomer. And wipe off the brush, the entire way of the brush. Yeah. And then, let me do it again. And wipe it off. And then tap one time. We're going to wait on that pearl for that. This is our cuticle bead, remember? And then now that it's a pearl, we're going to go ahead and flip it over. And set it down close to... The cuticle but not on it okay and normally if the if you were doing a client their nails will be facing down so we're doing this on the paper so it's gonna be different so I'm gonna wipe off my brush and then I'm gonna pat all of this would have flowed forward if the paper was actually sitting up so I like to keep my brush behind the product so you can kind of push it into the cuticle area. So keep that in mind that the product will flow if you were doing this on an actual nail that was actually standing up. My uh, apex bead, I'm actually going to use it to blend. Let me get a little bit more monomer. Um, sometimes you have to do that as well. That's why practicing is good. Sometimes you have to get a little bit more monomer they help uh, mold the acrylic a little bit more and that's okay if you have to do that okay I'm gonna use my apex bead to blend these two so I'm gonna go ahead go into my monomer sometimes I like to kind of spread it out a little bit wipe off my brush the entire way because this is going to be my apex bead and I'm gonna tap and then I have a small bead just on that one side of my brush. And once that pearls, I'm going to wait a few more seconds. You don't want it to set all the way up either. And then you push that right in the middle. Set that down. Three, four, five. You have to find out how long you have to wait for your... Oops, I forgot. Um, you have to find out how long you have to wait for your product depending on the company that you're working for sometimes it'll flow fast and then sometimes it won't so you have to figure out that consistency that's why it's best that you still work with the same companies um monomer and polymer that way you know how it works for you and then you should kind of go in there i'm going to put in a bonus tip for you guys and that is how to pick up I'm trying to wipe that off. How to pick up a wet bead. What do people mean when they say, I'm going to work with a wet bead? And that's normally so that they can blend uh, what they currently have. And notice that I'm only using the tip of the brush to, to brush. Sometimes when you, when you pat, you will use the belly of the brush to work. You know, to pat in place, so you'll be using the belly part of your brush. And then when you uh, actually stroke your beads, you'll be using the tip so that you can get that light feather. So you can get that, you'll be flicking, you know, flick, not press really hard or anything like that. It will dry your bead out. So you just want to blend, you know, and that's why I like working with the oval brushes because they are contoured for that cuticle area. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's pick up bonus tip. I'm gonna pick up a wet bead to finish. I'm sorry, to finish blending these because as you can look and see, they're not fully blended. So I'm gonna go in. Sometimes you need more product 
than what you have. And I'm just going to do like a halfway, which would normally be for a medium bead, but I'm only going to tap once so that I can get a wetter bead than normal. And then I'm actually going to sit this down right here and pull. And then that's going to allow me to be able to stroke the bead out and blend it with the current product that's already on the nail. And then when you are actually doing your nails, you want to be sure that you are looking at the nail from all sides of the nail to ensure that you have the proper structure. You have your apex and that and everything is uh, even and there's no bumps and there's no lumps. And be sure that everything's all even. So, and then I have my apex right in there, so it looks really good. Sometimes you do have to clean around that cuticle area. Which is by far sometimes the struggle, really. The cuticle area is the struggle, honey. There. And that looks a lot better. And so I'll just ensure that there's no acrylic or anything like that stuck in my brush. All right. So, tell me what you guys think. If you like this, if you want to see more of these videos, um, let me know um, down in the comment section below how did you like this. If there's anything else that you guys would like to see, please let me know. Don't forget to follow me on my social uh, accounts, which will be linked up in the upper left-hand corner of this video. That's going to be all for now. Don't forget to check the description box below. I will link her information for you guys to be able to practice your product consistency. If there's anything else at all, guys, don't hesitate to drop those in the comments. That's going to be all for this video. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and be blessed. What's good, Tiff?